Hey everyone. Um, in this short video, we're going to discuss the frequency response of feedback control systems. So the content of this lecture is based on chapter 11 of the textbook Chemical and Bioprocess Control by James Riggs. Um, so we're not going to go into a lot of detail of this chapter, but there's a few important things that we want to understand because these things, these are some of the things that you may actually use or experience in your career. So first I want to point off mentioned that the frequency response analysis is a study of how fast or is a study of how processes respond to sinusoidal inputs. So essentially you want to we want to see how disturbances are propagated through systems for especially feedback control systems. So many uh, many disturbances can affect the process and these can have different time scales um, and the different time scale of the, of the disturbance is going to affect the process behavior and so we want to understand what, like what type and what time scales of the disturbance can have an effect on our process. Uh, this can help control engineers understand how these disturbances propagate through the, through the process. Um, but in reality, this type of analysis is primarily used in research and advanced level design, and it's not something that's typically used for process control engineers. Okay, so what, it, what this means is if we look at the controller, if we look at controller output, so this plot shows controller output and the controller output is, let's see, the controller output is shown here. So this thin curve, C, this is the controller output. So what we can see here is that there is a sinusoidal um, input given to the controller. So the controller is gonna, it's gonna um, send a sinusoidal signal signal to the actuator. The actuator is going to again sinusoidally affect the process and we're going to measure the overall process response. And so the process response could look something like this. So this dark curve, this black curve, shows what the sensor response is to the sinusoidal input of the process. Okay, and so this is an important uh, this is an important way to characterize a process because it can tell us um, what frequencies of disturbances have an effect on the process. Let's just consider a couple examples for before we go too far. Imagine you have a sinusoidal input that's extremely slow. So for example, the controller change is, is very slow. You would expect that for whatever change that was made, for example, a change in the, the, y, the specified value of the process, the sensor value is going to keep up with it because there's plenty of time for the system to respond to the slow frequency of the disturbance. So again, slow disturbances um, can be handled very easily by the process. Now imagine on the flip side, a disturbance that has an extremely high frequency. So you have a very fast and rapid change in your controller. What's going to happen in this, in this case is that your um, the, the controller is essentially going to going to average itself out and you wouldn't expect to see a lot of um, changes in your control variable or in your sense value. All right, so the characteristics of this type of response. So again, if we have a, a, a really slow response, we would expect the, the process to keep up with the response. Really high frequency, we would expect it to essentially average out. But intermediate level frequencies, we can see um, a type of behavior that can help us understand how these disturbances propagate through the process. Some of the things that we want to know, there's two things that, that are important. One, we have a, essentially, a, an amplitude associated with the sinusoidal input, and then there's an amplitude associated with um, the uh, sense value. So one of the important parameters is called the amplitude ratio, AR, and AR is just a measure of the amplitude of the output over the amplitude of the input. Okay, the other term that we care about is called phase angle. So phase angle is going to be the difference in phase between the two signals. So if these, if their phase angle is zero, these things are perfectly in phase. If the phase angle is 180 degrees, they're perfectly out of phase and they can kind of show up anywhere between zero and 360 degrees in terms of the phase angle. And this is all going to be related to, you know, what is this distance that we have in here between the two peaks? That's going to tell us the phase angle. 
So a way we can represent this type of data is called a Bode plot, and this is a convenient way of presenting the amplitude ratio, the amplitude ratio AR, and the phase angle as a function of frequency. So this right here is the frequency of the input to the process. So the, the controller value was changed at a certain frequency. Again, for, for extremely small, for very small values of frequency, which means the process is changing really slow, we don't expect there to be any amplitude reduction, which means that the amplitude ratio should be one um, up to a certain point. And again, also for these slow processes, we would expect the system to be um, to stay fairly well in phase. So the phase angle up here would be close to zero. Again, for really high frequencies, essentially we would expect that this uh, amplitude ratio is gonna go to zero. So at high frequencies, the amplitude ratio gets extremely small because essentially what's happening is the, the disturbance is, is too fast or the con controller input is changing too fast that that's just averaging out on the process. So, and again, these we wouldn't expect to see really anything in terms of the phase angle. But then again, for these intermediate types of frequencies shown here, we can see where the phase angle changes from zero to 360. And this can give us a measure of how um, disturbances propagate, or how disturbances propagate through processes. Okay, so some of the lessons that we can learn by doing this type of frequency analysis um, is, uh, is summarized here. So again, at low frequencies, so low frequencies, this means the disturbance is very slow. The controller has plenty of time to reject the disturbance, and we would expect the amplitude ratio to be fairly small. So the disturbances aren't going to be propagated to the next part of the process. Um, also, most processes can average out. So high frequency, very fast variations in the input, these are going to be leveled out. So the amplitude ratio is small in this case as well. Because again, we don't expect there to be any change of the process because the inputs are essentially averaged out. Again, what comes in where, where we need to be, um, where we need to give consideration is these intermediate frequencies. So intermediate frequencies, control systems, are sensitive to disturbance propagation. So what that means is essentially when a disturbance shows up in one process, um, it's, it's not necessarily, or it may not necessarily dampen out fast enough and it can propagate and grow in subsequent processes that are downstream from where the disturbance is formed in the process. So because of this, we need to understand how the frequency of inputs affect the control loop performance and the stability is also important. Um, so, but uh, in chapter 11 in the textbook, you'll probably notice there's a lot of math, but this mathematical analysis of control loop uh, frequency response is rarely used in practice. And primarily our objective is we want to understand, you know, what are the relative timescales of the disturbances that can affect our process? And are these disturbances that we have to worry about propagating and growing later in, in processes that aren't necessarily ours? So in summary, the things that are important, and again, as in any other chapter in the textbook, one of the things you might want to do is, you know, after you go through and watch the video, go to the summary points and make sure you kind of hit the highlights. Um, so the frequency analysis is important because the frequency of the input to the process or the disturbance can have an effect on the closed loop performance. Um, and the closed loop response of the process indicates um, how the disturbance frequencies for the controller or which disturbance frequencies of the controller are most sensitive. Again, this is important because these types of disturbances can propagate and later affect other downstream processes from which you're trying to control. So that's going to be it for this lecture. Uh, we'll see you next time.